Hello, this is an assessment of a Schiedemeyer Grand Piano, uh, made in 1881, I believe. There's actually a number on the top that dates it to off post-1900, but these pedals give it away. It's almost definitely that kind of period. So 1881, um, Schiedemeyer is in the UK. It's not uncommon to find them that old, though usually perhaps 1885 or so. This is one of the oldest I've seen. And the legs here uh, aren't original. They're, they should be turned legs. The piano is 190 centimetres long. It's got a very nice Rio rosewood veneer. Um, if you look on the top of the piano here, you can see such a contrast in the colours. That's something we, we, we just love French polishing that. Because uh, if you put just a natural polish on, it'll come out like this. And that's what there seems to have been done here. Though there's some fading. There's, there's a lot of light come onto this side and onto the back part. And the lid's been held back. So, of course, it's faded where it's um, faded where it's been exposed and uh, not faded where it's held back but it's a beautiful veneer. Our piano's had replaced key tops here um, perhaps not of the highest quality I think we'd like to replace it with more ivory look-alike than that um, but they're perfectly all right um, so that's something to think about. Now one of the main one of the main problems with this piano is that the tuning pins are, are loose and that's clearly the case they've been replaced it's been restrung at some stage so they're, t they're taller, um, they're thicker tuning pins than the originals. Quite a variety of them actually. There's one here that's quite large and, and they're still going a bit loose. So that would mean that the rest plank under here needs, needs changing. We did discover quite an unusual problem here and that is that two of the tuning pins, those two, are too close to each other. I don't think I've ever seen that, especially on a high quality piano such as the Schiedemeyer, which is very respected make. Um, so that's very unusual. Uh, and as you can see, I think what we have to do uh, when we replace the rest plank is to angle very very slightly angle this a bit further and possibly if we can I don't know if we'd be able to just file down the frame a little bit to move it over it's not very far but it's, it means that I can't tune it with this at all with this standard lever certain aspects of the restoration were done quite well because you've got quite a, a rich bass there as you expect That's this age of piano, 1881, there's a similar, very similar looking Steinways of a similar length. Um, and this is uh, pretty much uh, not far off the sound of the Steinway of that length. Though not having the name Steinway restored, it wouldn't have the same value, I'm afraid. But uh, the piano is going to restore very well. And there's a slight patch around here. This is uh, top C above middle C. But it's not very significant. Um, the question is whether you need to replace the soundboard or not. Well, because the, the down bearing, which is the key factor, this is reasonably good. You can tell that because the sound is strong around here. It carries right through the soundboard from one side to the other. Uh, so we'd have to think about that. You can replace the soundboard, obviously. If you're going to replace the rest plank, then it's, uh, you, you can start to do all sorts of things. It's worth doing them. It's a very good piano, so well worth doing. Um, so having a look at the soundboard, it's been, when it was restored, it's been shimmed. You see these lighter colours here. Um, that's, com that's correct. Um, but since then, it's, some of the, it's been opened up a bit more. You can see a crack there that's opened up since. And if we look underneath, you'll, um, we'll get a clearer picture. Now here's the underside of the soundboard, and you can actually see light through this one here. Uh, on the video, it doesn't show very well, but I can actually see the light coming through very clearly. Uh, that's quite a, a wide crack, about a millimetre. Um, now, it's an important point here is that the sound is carried, carried by the ribs. So the cracks in the soundboard indicate that it's dried out, but they may not be causing much loss of tone, if any. Uh, any honest restringer will tell you that. Uh, that but if, of course, if you do restring the piano, you, you want it to look good, so you do, you do shim it, um, and maybe makes a slight difference. But um, the, the, the cracks indicate dryness because the sound is carried the other way. So it doesn't alter the tone that much, but it might mean it's lost its crown as well. That's lost, lost its hill in the middle of the soundboard. These lyre shaped pedals are typical of that age of piano and uh, they're in very good condition. They need a bit of uh, uh, bushing and so I expect the felt's just worn out a bit, but not that much. It's been reconditioned anyway. The legs, as I say, they should be turned legs and uh, it would be quite um, a common thing to just replace them with the original turned legs. And then you have to fake in the rosewood on the legs because it's not real rosewood. Obviously, you don't, this is rosewood veneer. You don't manage to get that on the legs. Uh, technicians will be interested to see how this fall comes out. It's very much like a Steinway, uh, the design here. Um, and and actually, Stuttgart says so a bit of a Richard Lip thrown in as well. Uh, very good firm as well as Schiedemeyer. And 
uh, if we look there, you can see, trying to get, focus in, there we are. You can see that's that's actually screwed in, because on Steinway it's not. In actual fact, I prefer this because they tend to fall off on Steinway. Though you'd have to unscrew it if you want to take the fall off, so you can uh, check the on a quarter pedal. Um, sorry if you're not a technician, but we get lots of technicians watching these videos. And uh, please add your comments if you think I've said something wrong. Uh, we've got the action out here. This wooden action stand is very much of that age. It's another confirmation of the age of the piano. I have a Beckstein in stock at the moment that we fully restored. Uh, beautifully light to pull in and out the action. I really like that. Uh, but uh, you can see the action is very simple. And uh, for, Sorry, I beg your pardon. Very similar to a Steinway action here. And uh, you notice the uh, hammer rail here hasn't got a rail. It's got individual um, as they have on Steinway. So... And someone's changed the rollers here, which seem to be fine, but strangely enough, uh, the regulation isn't. Uh, there, so they should be above the above the rail, um, so about there. Uh, you usually would achieve that if you change the roller, so I don't know what's happened there. Um, and we have quite loose hinges. As you can, these hinges are loose. So no doubt about this, the hammers are very worn as well. Um, and they're letting the tone of the piano down chronically. So you can't really do much about these. They are hard there, but if you reface them, there's not a huge amount left uh, to reface. That's gone too far, I think. Um, besides which, you need to change the shank. The, we need to change this hinge. So I would change hammer shanks, and the rollers will be new anyway if we change those because Renner pro provide them with rollers already on. Um, so that that's something very standard you've seen on other videos. Uh, um, if you've been on our channel before the, the lever itself i think will be fine it's a standard lever um i don't anticipate any problems with that hopefully we don't have to change it uh so that, that should just be a matter of reconditioning it and someone's graphite it here so some work's been done really well uh the check there's plenty of wear left in it so if you're wanting a budget job then that wouldn't be necessary to change either um i would say it's got a, as much wear left in it as uh, the hammer would replace hammers or well, they could change it. So there's a few decisions to make. Um, the spring there, that's working properly as I release the back check by lifting my finger up a bit. It, it comes up, but it's not even on all of them. That one's, oh, that one's coming up too. That one is slightly. So the springs aren't, that one's not coming up. So they do need regulating. And when you put new hammers on anyway, uh, we need to adjust the whole thing and reweight the keys. The keys don't feel uh, very uh, controlled at all. But I think once we've, change the hammer shanks and rollers, that'll help. Then we can weight the keys and get a nice touch at the same time. So that's an assessment of a Schiedermeyer Grand Piano. It's 190 centimeters, about six foot three, and uh, made in about 1881. And the tone throughout, is, it's got a beautiful tone. Almost exact, almost, um, even throughout, slight, very slight patch here, but nothing to worry about. Tenor, not as good as it could possibly be. Bottom bass is really nice. And these new hammers, no doubt about it, they're letting the tone down. You can't play with the kind of finesse. It doesn't bring the harmonics out, especially if you listen to that. Uh, well, if you hear a piano that's fully restored, uh, then you'll see the difference. We we commonly fully restore pianos of this age. We have a back sign of a very similar age at the moment, and it just has a very lush, wonderful tone. They made pianos so well, and the frame on the piano, this frame on this piano has not really changed a lot over a 20-year period. It's extremely similar to a Steinway of the same sort of age. Thank you very much for listening.